Okay, moving on to North America. We have our judges for this final region, uh, which we'll pull up now. We have Stephen Snyder, uh, Managing Director for JetBlue Ventures, Kara Whitehill, Stephen Joyce, Adam Harris, and Darren Henley. Our first startup today is Nicholas Palufo from Traveler. He will be joining us with his presentation. And after that, we'll invite all of the judges to come back up. So please, Nicholas, as soon as you're ready and start speaking, we'll put five minutes on the clock so that we can time you for your presentation. Judges, if you wouldn't mind bringing your video down, we'll start with Nick. Wonderful. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Nicholas Blufo. I'm co-founder and CEO of Traveler, a fintech for travel startup based out of Santa Barbara, California. I've been in hospitality, tech, and finance for 23 years. The first half of my career, I was heavily involved in hotel sales and marketing, which meant I spent a lot of time traveling the world, attending trade shows and doing sales calls, a space and network I got to know really well. I was then really surprised when, about a year ago, my sister, who owns a travel agency, told me that her number one problem remains receiving commissions, a statement that I validated with hundreds of travel players in the industry. Knowing how many people's lives and businesses depend on the efficiency of the process, I had enough, so I took upon myself to fix this. Let's start with the basics. Hotels, like any other business, depend on maximizing top line and bottom line, and they need several channels in order to achieve that. It's only fair to expect that those intermediaries expect a fair and square payment. That's not exactly what happens today. So let me walk you through the commission settlement journey. First, an agency sends a booking to a hotel, usually with tokenized payment information. That information is sent to a payment processor, which then returns the funds to the hotel. Then at some point after checkout, the hotel initiates the settlement process, which requires identification of the transaction, the parties, the agreement between the parties, invoicing and payment information. Net result is about 90 day delay on payments and losses to amount to over 20% of total commissions. The alternative is to hire a third party commission settlement company, which increases the number of steps but reduces payment delay down to 60 days and losses to 10% on average. Using Traveler, there's a single step, a week or less for payment and zero losses. And oh, by the way, it's all automated no human interaction necessary. So for the last six years, we've been dealing with archaic processes and where they result in all the previously mentioned inefficiencies. Now, there's a better way. Our platform does four things. Bookings, payment processing, payment split, or real-time reporting. What's different about this is commission management solutions, the third parties that I mentioned before, they don't do bookings, they don't do payment processing, and booking channels don't process payments, let alone split them or report them in real time. Going forward, we want to focus on the payment side and become a channel and brand agnostic payment solution for any B2B booking channel. Think about something similar to pay with PayPal for e-commerce, you would be able to pay with Traveler in a B2B booking channel. Today, the alternative is to use net rates with, through bad banks and wholesalers, which harm hotels, KPIs, and management companies' revenues. Furthermore, they damage the assets valuation and can trigger hotel management contracts covenants, opening the opportunity for an owner to place a manager for not achieving a great performance. We launched our MVP in a closed beta 12 weeks ago and have grown every week since. Our founding team has strong travel, technology, and finance experience, which combined with our amazing advisors leverages our knowledge to hundreds of years in the travel space from a product, finance, operations, sales, and marketing perspective. So thank you very much. And I'm open to questions. Thanks, Nick. Great, uh, great timing. Thanks very much. All right, so we've got some new fresh judges with some new fresh questions and ready to kick things off. Who would like to ask our first question? Like Darren, go for Darren. Yeah, nice presentation. Um, 
I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the space on the fintech side and on the hotel side. I'm curious if you're closing the gap on the commission payment piece of it, are you taking the risk on if you're assuming the, the payment side of it and then remitting that back to the property? No, so we actually process the payments on behalf of the property, right? So on the client's credit card, they still see, let's say, Four Seasons Central Park, right? Just using a random example. So essentially, the liability is still on their side. We just process on their behalf, and we use Adyen to process those payments for us. So we don't actually manage any of the funds, right? We essentially just provide the rule of business in between the parties. Okay. So, so further right. to that is just... A quick follow on is Adian taking the risk on I, I'm trying to figure out the gap between paying the hotel for the room that, and then how, yeah. how you're closing that 90 days to seven days. Yeah, technically, uh, whenever there is a, a issue, for example, a chargeback, right? The credit card issuer will go after the acquirer or processor, which is Adian, which goes after the master uh, merchant of record, which is us, that we go after the sub merchant of record, which is the hotel. So as per agreement, it's just a downstream flow. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, Kara, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I understand the value prop for the, the advisors. What is the value prop here for the hotels? So um, in this first phase of, of our business, when we have our own booking channel, we bring them more business, right? And bring them more business because we have more agents and those agents are heavily incentivized. Right. So it's pretty simple. We just bring in more heads and bads. Uh, going forward and focusing on the payment component, if you look at a hotel's uh, you know, property level PL, they spend anywhere between three to 10% on marketing and sales. Uh, given that it's impossible for them to compete with booking.com's you know, billion euro uh, performance marketing budget, they need those uh, those agents or you know other channels to perform to them and after spending so much money acquiring those businesses, uh, if they don't pay them well, then they're gonna end up either selling through wholesalers or just losing business to their next door neighbor, right? So increasing someone else's uh, comp sad uh, performance. So is is then, if I'm following right, the because um, they, they kind of monetize on the float, right? That, you know, when they're collecting the payment and then they don't have to pay the commissions out for 60 or 90 days, they're kind of monetizing on that part. So that the angle here is that they'll save more by increasing their direct share of market and reducing their marketing spend versus the opportunity cost of owning that float. Is well, that how it, to think about it? Yeah, I mean, the financial component of it, if you take into account let's say, you know, 90 days, 10%, whatever the percentage uh, of business that comes through travel agents and cost of capital, you're talking about very little money. Uh, and if you factor back in the amount of work and mistakes and headaches, that that's a net negative uh, math. So I don't think anybody actually thinks from, from that perspective. Uh, but if you do look in terms of incentivizing your best uh, partners, then that's net positive. If you look at actually going direct to the actual originators of the reservation, as opposed to having a bad bank and wholesaler and you know a gazillion people in the middle, and actually paying them two, three, four, five x commissions on that without having the customer service and the uh, data they would normally have, that's a very high net positive uh, transaction. Okay, thanks very much. We're out of time for questions, so we'll bring judges back after the next presentation, which is Irving Batesh from Scion. Irving, if you could bring up your presentation, we will start you off as soon as you start speaking with your five minutes. You're on mute. Er er I always do something wrong. Okay. Sion is a B2B SaaS platform that manages, tracks, and chases commissions for the travel industry, where 40% of commissions earned contain discrepancies or don't get paid. Sion's primary focus is an agency's time and money and ultimately provides the peace of mind needed to focus on what they should be, selling travel. I founded Sion because I felt this problem firsthand. When I started my agency 11 years ago, I came into it with no experience or guidance. I was fortunate to have quick success, but due to ignorance, I just assumed I'd be paid the money I earned. When that didn't happen, I was confused and it led to certain false assumptions. 
But over the course of the next few years, my curiosity led me to learn that the root of this problem is a data problem and our industry being entrenched to really outdated technology. So what exactly are the symptoms of this pain? First and foremost is data accuracy. Agencies get paid on the total revenue of a booking, which they have no insight into. If things change post-booking, which is very often the case, they're left in the dark, and they rely on manual processes to get their booking data to their back office systems. Whether that's trams or an Excel sheet, manual processes always lead to missing or inaccurate data. Reconciliation of payments received is a nightmare. Agency accounting departments don't get paid enough for the work they have to endure. Reconciling hundreds or thousands of payments per week with minimal reference info against inaccurate and incomplete data in the back office. This leaves agencies in a terrible place to chase the balance of their receivables. Some decide to avoid chasing at all, and the ones that do are chasing off bad data, wasting everyone's time, either writing individual emails or outsourcing to third parties which are expensive and which they have no visibility into their chasing efforts. And all of this is done using 40-year-old technology. Sion is the tranquility the travel industry has been waiting for. Anything that touches the commission process is our focus. It starts with getting good data in the system. Sion is live with the GDS, zero manual reliance. Any bookings made, changed, or canceled in the GDS are reflected in Sion in real time. And bookings made manually over phone or email can be manually entered in our system in less than 15 seconds, as opposed to over 10 minutes on some incumbent systems. And CR normalizes the data no matter the source for ultimate consistency and reporting. Our auto reconciliation may be our most impressive feature, saving accounting teams days of work per week. Sion ingests any payment file and can match and reconcile thousands of payments in seconds. It not only reconciles with perfect accuracy, it also brings to your attention what you should be investigating and why. This leaves our customers with a true balance of what needs to be chased. And Sion allows our users to send invoices to suppliers and clients directly through our system. In the coming weeks, they'll be able to set their rules for commission chasing and we'll do the rest. Last but not least is the experience and transparency on Sion. Any system can have data. But Sion is real time and your data is accessible whenever and however you want it in just a few clicks, clicks to all stakeholders involved. We're so excited to announce our latest two features that were added earlier this month. The first is payment processing. Through a partnership with Flywire, all invoices sent via Sion can now be paid. Recipients can pay by credit card, ACH, or international wire. Funds get delivered in one to two days instead of four to six weeks or more and auto reconcile in our system. One less thing for accounting to worry about. Even cooler are our live statements. Suppliers who receive invoices can now edit the invoice if there's a discrepancy on their end, and those updates get pushed directly into Sion to fill in the gaps. As I alluded to earlier, the next big feature being released is auto invoicing. So this will allow you to put commission chasing on autopilot by setting up your chasing rules. Just set it and forget it. Lastly, the most significant release this year will be our launch of Sion for suppliers. This will give hotels and other travel suppliers the same automation, reporting, and data enhancement the agencies enjoy. Specifically, they'll be able to automate their commission payables process, and with access to their PMS, will be able to update agencies in real time to any changes made to their bookings. The results of our software are evident. We're now managing over $3 billion in booking revenue. We have over 3,000 monthly active users operating at a 98% retention rate. We've had no churn at all in 2023. In Q1 alone, we've doubled our total ARR from the end of Q4 2022. Also in Q1, we were directly responsible for bringing in $4 million in delinquent commissions. That means only past due bookings which were chased through our system. We wouldn't be able to do this without an amazing team. Here are some of our core team members, a mix of people with vast industry experience, but just as important, non-industry people as well, who will bring the fresh perspective our industry needs and who are always questioning the status quo. Here's some background on the money we've raised so far, and we'll be raising our next uh, round of funding in the coming months. Thank you very much. And thank you, Irving. Perfect timing. All right, judges, come on back. I'm sure there's some questions for Irving. Who would like to kick us off? It's a great presentation. <laughs> Thank you. I guess I <laughs> no, answered all the very questions. Very comprehensive. Amazing. No, I, I do have my hand up there, Kimberly. Okay, go ahead, Stephen. Um, yeah, thanks. I, I 
it, with the first two presented, there seems to be a bit of a theme happening here. Um, so how are you, you didn't mention uh, how you generate revenues on this? Is it transaction fees or are you a, a SaaS fees for this? How does that work? So up until now, it's all SaaS fees. Um, we are, our product is just agency facing, agency and agent facing at the moment. So they are SaaS fees. The way we structure those fees are depending on how they use on. If it is strictly for, as a commission tracker, it is a transaction fee per booking. Uh, if someone's using us um, more as an operating system, which is agent facing, um, we lean towards the user-based model where we sell in, um, in booking blocks based, I mean, in uh, user blocks. But um, now with the payment processing, we're also, uh, you know, have a rev share with Flywire. Uh, so we're going to be making money off payment processing as well. Great, Adam, I, I know you have a question. Go ahead. No, I was trying to think of where you're prioritizing. Is it working just with the suppliers, meaning the travel agents who are booking on behalf or sorry, the the consumers, the suppliers that are are, are ultimately delivering you inventory because I, I look at this as like a chicken of an egg problem you've got hotels who are what you're ultimately trying to chase down for the commission and you're using gds as as your sort of leverage point but gds represents what 10 15 percent of all reservations in the world and and yet commission handling is a huge problem for the hotel asset as well and mm -hmm. and not overpaying in commission and so the idea that you have to go and integrate with close to a thousand different PMSs or intermediaries that sit above that is a very daunting task. Um, and, and I'm curious where and how you reach critical mass to really scale this thing. <clears throat> so a few, few things. First off, I, I thought the GDS booking percentage was a little higher, but you could be right. Um, so um, the way we built Sion is that there is maximum value for whether it's a supplier on, on what we're releasing later this year or for a travel agency without the other party involved. So we understand as good as we can make it with only one side, which is what we already did with the travel agencies. But when both are on our system, um, that is sort of like the holy grail, right? Because everyone is, um, uh, is uh, the data is transparent and there's one version of the booking on both sides. But a perfect example is if an agency and a hotel are both on our system and that reservation is linked, if the client extends a day or no shows, it updates in the PMS, it updates for the agency in real time. But it's still all we still offer the same value because if the IATA number or agency for that booking that changed um, is not on Sion, we just automate an email to that agency that lets them know. Like we're just trying to make sure that everyone is on the same page. Um, because too much time is being wasted. And to your point about the PMSs, I mean, we started with uh, Oracle cl uh, Cloud. We do understand that there is, you know, probably over 100 main PMS systems that we could integrate with. But we're also um, speaking with two companies right now that are already integrated with them to sort of speed up that process. But regardless for the supplier product, um, Oracle Cloud, we have enough suppliers that want to beta test with us later this year uh, who are on Oracle Cloud, and there's a big enough to, uh, base to get started there. So, um, but yes, uh, the data uh, is coming from a lot of different places, and Sion normalizes it. It's probably the, you know, it's what we specialize in. Okay, thanks very much, Irving. We're going to move on to our next startup and welcome Stephanie Daniel from Legends. To present to uh, to everyone next, Stephanie, if you could bring up your presentation, we'll put five minutes on the clock, and as soon as you start speaking, we will start the timer. Thanks very much. Great. Hi, everyone. I'm Stephanie Daniel, co-founder and CEO of Legends. Imagine a world where your phone is the operating system of humans, capturing your experiences as the most authentic representation of your values, your preferences, your soul. Now imagine this data can be harnessed to power exploration of the world in a way that truly suits you. Legends makes this world possible by transforming traveler phone data into actionable preference profiles that help travel providers personalize. Now we all know the promise of personalization is much talked about, 
Our core truths are that today's consumer wants more personalization in every aspect of life, from music to fashion to travel. It drives the brands we engage with and where we spend money. Consumer data is the foundation to deliver it, but an increase in regulation and a value shift mean the future has to be first and zero party data, not traditional third party sources. The reality is that the challenges of personalization mean travel providers are leaving up to around 130 billion of revenue opportunities on the table and are unable to optimize their 5 billion marketing spend. So why hasn't this been done fully? Well, how can a provider truly personalize if they don't have a full picture of a traveler's preferences? Our view is that there's a fundamental data problem for the industry. Data is locked in silos in disparate platforms and tools across every stage of the journey. Current third-party data sources are often generic, transactional, and static, and not transformed into actionable insights. So we said there has to be a new and better way. We realize there's been a huge behavior shift for us as a society in the last few years. We carry our phones every second of every day. 95% of us use them when traveling. We take more than 5 billion photos a day, generating 14 trillion pieces of metadata, like the latitude and longitude that is part of every photo you've taken. So what if we could build a tech to capture this entirely untapped source of data with no effort from the traveler? So we did. Our privacy control process transforms phone metadata into what we call your travel DNA the deepest preference data set ever available to the industry. Not just every city and country you visited, but your preferences of climate, activities, accommodation types, and much, much more. Imagine a world where you're in Costa Rica, you took a photo of your morning surf session, and from one photo, your preferences are now updated to Costa Rica in January, surfer, morning, and enjoys tropical climate. Your DNA evolves with you in real time, dynamically updating with every new experience. So now imagine with this information, what a travel provider can do to provide the right offer at the right time to travelers before, during, and after a trip, enabling higher conversion, revenue, loyalty, and overall traveler experience. For example, now the hotel can provide offers for their Ecuador hotel in Feb, upsell you with a surf experience before or during your stay. So how does our product work? We created the first AI-driven model that collects, processes, and transforms past and existing travel data into real-time preference profiles. First, our proprietary process ingests the traveler's data from their photos, device, and location, and we apply harmonization protocol. Our processing includes geohashing, parsing, and image recognition to create new segmentations. We continue to train our model to identify common sequences like frequently visited places, duration, seasonality trends, and ultimately we transform and deliver key insights for brands to engage with in real time so they can drive hyper-personalization at scale. Our platform is delivering new tools to create the first traveler-powered data ecosystem. We deliver our technology through an API that integrates within brands' existing tech stack, such as their CRM, PMS, or consumer application. Our business model has been validated by many data platforms through the years. We're a B2B SaaS subscription model with a focus on delivering our tech through the DNA API, starting at 25K a year for up to 10K calls on travelers. Our go-to-market is simple. Our initial focus is on licensing our technology to travel providers that have existing consumer apps, starting with core initial segments, including luxury travel agent networks, tour operators, tech forward hospitality providers, as well as partnering with existing tech partners in the industry. Looking bottoms up, core travel segments of providers see a TAM of north of 12 billion. So where are we at? We've proven we can execute with limited resources and high efficiency. With only 200K and in five months, we built our beta to validate the tech collection process of the DNA and that 90% of travelers will share their data and engage with the platform. We've had meetings with over 50 industry providers and over 90% have indicated a desire for this type of data. We're currently building our B2B pipeline and we'll be engaging with three dev partners in Q3. On the funding side, we raised 250K from Angels and Trip Ventures and we are currently building relationships for our upcoming pre-seed round, which will enable our launch to 25 partners and monetization. Our DNA includes a new impact metric to promote sustainable practices, empowering travelers and brands to make conscious data-driven decisions. We focus on awareness, partnerships, and governance. Our mission-driven team shares a passion for success, innovation, and a belief that travel helps us grow and evolve as humans. I bring 15 years management experience from investment banking, my co-founder Shana, 10 years running go-to-market sales and product, and our CTO Shanks, 10 years of engineering AI and data experience. We are out Okay, thanks, Stephanie. We're gonna have to stop you there. You're over time and we'll invite all of the judges to come back. Great presentation. All okay. right, thanks very much.
Who'd like to start us off? Steven Snyder, go ahead. Cool. Uh, wonderful presentation, Stephanie. Very interesting concept. I'm curious about the buy-in that is required from the kind of intermediary tech companies here, the Apples, the Googles, the, can't they just do this on their own? Why would they want to work with an external party? Well, so the nice thing is we don't need them. Um, our technology entirely relies on the relationship between us and the consumer. Um, so the, from a privacy perspective, um, the consumer opts in and consents to share their data. Once they've done that, we can scan their photo and phone data instantly. And we actually don't need um, Apple or Google you know, for, for any aspect of that. And that's one of the things we focused on from the beginning, um, rather than relying, for example, on scraping social media sources or other third party sources, um, we started with what can we can we and the traveler control. Now, why won't they build something similar themselves? Um, you know, ultimately there are some trust elements with their brands, but we believe that it's not core to their business model. They have a very standard advertising data approach and their databases are not structured for this kind of useful, actionable travel preference data. Um, and there are other examples we can point to, like Waze had to exist, even though Google Maps already existed, because it's a different use case. Okay, Darren, we'll go to you next. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, Stephanie. Um, I have a very strong curiosity about what you guys are tackling. This is, is super interesting. Mike, I'm curious where the preference profiles are stored and with your life, if you're licensing this technology to your customers, are there any concerns around GDPR? Um, great question and something we think about a lot. Um, ultimately, um, so in the app we've we've currently built to test the technology, it's stored in, the profiles are stored in AWS. Um, through our API technology, when we integrate with partners, we will work closely with them to store it in the most appropriate place that is useful for their current flows and their current systems and taking into account any required regulations given their international kind of setup. Okay, we'll go to Kara next. Yeah, uh, just quickly, because I know we're uh, coming up on time, but um, how do, I take a lot of pictures that have nothing to do with my profile or preferences, um, similar to like when I shop on Amazon, I'm buying a gift for somebody, I can exclude that from their algorithm. Do you have something similar? Yeah, we have a um, a process to filter essentially and make the data the most usable um, as, as possible. For example, we automatically exclude any screenshots and then we, um, have a different uh, grading of the priority of preferences. So if you've got more than 10 photos of something, then that goes up in the ranking, for example. So yes, we have a whole process around that and it's something we're very thoughtful about. The other thing to remember is we actually don't store the traveler's photo. We're just scraping the data. Um, and I think that's been important for us as, as part of the messaging. Okay, thanks, Stephanie. We'll have to end there. Stephen, you can be first for the next one. And we're welcoming our next startup, which is Guru Hotel, and we have Josue Gio from Guru Hotel presenting uh, next up. Welcome to the stage, Josue. Kara, uh, if you could take your video down, thank you. Okay, we'll put five minutes on the clock as soon as you're ready and have your presentation up. When you start speaking, we'll start the timer. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Josue Gio, CEO and founder at Good Hotel. Um, I have to say this, uh, today, the worst experience in e-commerce is booking a room on an hotel website. We continue seeing old websites that look like from the 90s or ultra modern websites refusing to accept your credit card with booking engines that ruin the experience of booking direct. Have you ever had to call or send countless emails to modify your reservation? And when communication fails, have you resorted to making a chair back because it was impossible to reach the hotel? Now, put yourself in the shoes of the hotel owners. They are struggling to navigate the complex world of direct bookings, depending on, on online travel agencies. Ironically, this often leads to higher prices on their websites. Our vision is to transform the traveler and the hotelier experience by bringing automation and the best user experience to hotel websites. We started with the Shopify for hotels because online distribution is one of the biggest pains in the hospitality industry. One thing hotels want to improve is direct bookings. Most products in travel tech are, you know, property manager systems, channel managers, and other apps related to the guest experience. 
A Shopify for hotels makes sense because hotels have started spending a lot of money building their websites. We know the engineering market and building products or websites is expensive and maintaining them quickly, websites are, you know, outdated. With Guru Hotel, authors can launch their websites in 60 seconds without needing an agency or developers in their teams. Authors can connect their inventory from their preferred online travel agency, so they don't need a property management system or integrations to bring the real-time inventory. And travelers can complete a booking with multiple payment methods in minutes with the, with the best user experience. So we are building first the Shopify for hotels to enter deep into the operations. In the future, we will automate process like cancellations, refunds, change of dates, modification of reservation to transform the hotelier experience. Our business model is simple. We are not a SaaS company. We charge a 5% transaction fee plus the payment method rate, similar to the model used by online travel agencies. In an industry with over $270 billion in gross booking value and more than 850,000 hotels, we believe the market is ready to move direct distribution back to hotels and vacation rentals. We love the hospitality industry. Our team has been working in e-commerce for hotels and building fintech solutions in Latin America. We were part of Y Combinator in March 2020 when we launched our product. So, well, you can imagine exciting days to launch a company in this space on that day. So, but in, in 2020, we processed over 400K in bookings. And last year, we made 7.6 million in gross booking value. This year, in the year first three months, we recorded 3.3 million with a 200% year over year growth and less than 300 hotels using our platform. We will close this year with $50 million in gross booking value and 1,000 hotels. About our go to market, well, we recently partnered with Expedia to connect our website builder and their real time inventory to start building automated websites in less than 60 seconds to help you know, their independent hotel partners to launch a website easily. And we are working to bring our website builder to other platforms. We see a brighter future in the automated website. We know that you know, helping hotels reducing the time invested in manual process and automating their communications with travelers could improve their revenue. And our investors love what we are building. We raised 2.1 million in December, 2021, and we will start from raising in the next weeks to add capital to grow our customer base and to start integrating new partners. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks very much, Josue. We're bringing our judges back up. Okay. Stephen, I promised you could be first. Thanks. Um, yeah, great presentation. Thank you. I do have a question. Uh, in one of your later slides, you mentioned that you partner with Expedia to create uh, websites for the hotels. Why would Expedia do that if you're trying to focus on direct bookings rather than driving bookings through the OTA? Well, that's a, a, a nice question. I think Adi from Expedia was here before, so he can answer that question. But the first thing is that, you know, Expedia right now is like looking to ways to improve that traveler experience. You know? And right now, for example, a lot of these travelers that are visiting websites are domestic travelers. So, you know, CEO and, and the web positioning that they, we see right now in all these websites are domestic travelers visiting these websites because they are um, well positioned in their own markets. No? So that's why Expedia is like interested in entering into domestic travelers because they dominate the US based travelers and sometimes, you know, to access this, this traveler source so, and to, 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 Follow that travel or that journey that the hotel that the, the traveler is making is really interesting to, to them. So that's that's why. Adam, would you like yeah. to ask the next question? I, I would. I, so great presentation and, and I love the enthusiasm. You know, obviously I, I, I know a little bit about independent hotels given we process about $10 billion worth of bookings direct on behalf of independents all over the world. I, I'm trying to I'm trying to get perspective of how do you rationalize that Expedia doesn't have all the inventory of these independents? You only get a fraction of it. Um, not every hotel that's in Latin America, not every hotel in the US 
is using Expedia in all cases. Um, if anything, Booking might be the dominant provider from a supply perspective on OTA. So how are you guys going to encapsulate real inventory that's full in the complete picture? And what's the incentive to a provider like myself or some of the other sort of intermediaries that are already working with the hotel from a system of record perspective? Nice, nice questions. Yeah, yeah. So, well, what, what we are... You know, we know that Expedia doesn't have the, the full no, inventory from hotels, but something that they have is that they, they, they have some, in, some, some inventory right now, and it's one of these providers. So our idea is to start connecting other providers. So not just Expedia, but we have, you know, Despegar in Latin America, we have a Booking in other markets, we have, you know, all of them are like, you. all of them have a B2B, you know, um, solution right now offering their inventory to other tier party providers so that's that's the idea about you know integrating others and then bring the entire uh, inventory from different sources the why why we are entering this market with that way is because we know right now as, as you mentioned before now you have a lot of different hotels but you have a fraction of that market because the real penetration in this market is from OTAs. So if you see Booking and Expedia are the ones that have like 95% of the market right now, but tech auto, tech uh, providers no, uh, are like, off, they, they have 10 to 15% of the market. So that's why. And the other thing is our solution right now is focused for independent hotels, but the small ones, the ones that maybe they are you know worried about managing different sources from that inventory right now they are putting some rooms in booking some puts some some rooms in Expedia maybe they don't have they don't have a channel manager to connect that inventory so that's why we are like you know helping all these hotels and bringing that website as quickly as possible we really really with data that we are like sharing with all these hotels to to take action to take actions about their 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 strategies you know, in terms of revenue management and other things so that's that's our fears. Uh, that's the way we are entering, you know, and that's why. Okay. Thanks so much, Josue. We're going to have to stop you there. Uh, okay. Thank you, thank judges. You. We're bringing up our next startup. Madison Rifkin from Mount will be joining us now. Hi, Maddie. Hi. So please uh, bring up your presentation. And as soon as you're ready, we'll put five minutes on the clock. If you could start speaking, we will start the timer. Awesome. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. My name is Madison Rifkin, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Mount. We're a platform that allows you to rent anything at any time to anyone. Now, I know that's a pretty broad statement. So where we decided to start is in the Airbnb short-term rental industry, simply for the fact that amenity-based revenue is very hard to come by. Right now, your classic Airbnb short-term rental host is generating 99% of their revenue directly from bookings. It means they don't have the opportunity to capitalize on the guests when they're staying at their property. But on the flip side, these travelers and guests, 83% of them are paying for amenities, upsells, and experiences. They'll travel the mile down the road to go get the electric bike. They'll go to the golf cart rental shop. They're going to ask their host what to do and where to go, but the host can't access any of that spending revenue. So what it looks like is $9.2 billion being left on the table in potential revenue from upselling amenities that these hosts simply cannot access. So Mount created the platform that gives them access to this revenue. We can take whatever this host owns other than the house. So that could be electric bikes, golf carts, scooters, kayaks, paddle boards, and we turn them into rentable amenities or what we like to call experiences. So that when the guest shows up, they can use our app, they can see everything they wanna rent and purchase, and they can do so before their stay, during their stay, and just have an amazing elevated guest experience. Now, Mount is really unique for three reasons. First of all, we have a transactional app. This allows the Airbnb host to collect payment, offer these things for rent and purchase, and instead of what they used to do, which they used to use Venmo or cash if they wanted to sell anything extra, which is a quite awkward process. Second of all, we have an insurance policy. This is a big reason why Airbnb hosts don't do this to this day. They don't have an insurance policy that can cover injury liability and damage for electric bikes, scooters, golf carts, or it's very expensive and is not economical for the host. So our policy is custom built to our platform and covers all of that liability. Lastly, we have management tools. So our tools can tell the host when things are being booked, when they're being used, if they need maintenance, all that transparency that otherwise did not exist in previous ways of doing this. Now the market is massive, partly because Airbnb is a huge growing industry and company. We're looking at an entire addressable market of $115 billion when it comes to upselling amenities, specifically the amount within this industry. 
Our business model is simple. We make money two ways. First of all, we have our subscription, so our SaaS fee. We charge on average $45 a month per host to get access to our software. And then we also take on average about 20% of each booking. Uh, so this could be bike rentals, golf cart rentals, whatever it may be, we're making money off of that as well. Now, the biggest objection we currently get is that the Airbnb short-term rental market is massive. There's 7 million hosts worldwide, but it's very dispersed. They don't work together. There's no common database. How on earth are we going to find them all and get them on as customers? Well, we have found out that we have the key to aggregate the market, and it's with our strategic partners. The first group of strategic partners we work with is our social media influencers. They call themselves masterclass teachers. They're OG Airbnb hosts who have grown their businesses to generate eight to $10 million in revenue each year. And now they go around teaching other new hosts how to do it. And I, when I say they teach new hosts, they're teaching hundreds of thousands of new hosts every day. So we work with a fair amount of these influencers. And when they post organically, they talk about Mount in their, their classes. We're seeing on average one post yielding 70 new demos booked in 24 hours which means the demand for our product is 100% there. But that's not our large scalable strategy. Our large scalable strategy comes down to the tech stack this host is using. They don't only use a booking channel like Airbnb, they use a property management software to run all of their operations. Well, Mount has figured out how to integrate with these property management softwares so that we can get instant access to all of their customers. For example, Guesty, the biggest in the space, is now a partner of Mount so that when we launch that partnership, their 100,000 plus hosts all got instant access to become a mount host as well, list these amenities and start working together. And it's a repeatable process. We've done it with owner res, Enzo Connect, just to name a few, there's about 100 in our space. We don't need them to work, but they do like to work with mount as a property differentiator. And we're continuing that process. What we found out though, is that every single type of property needs rentable amenities. So that mount amenities are in your life where you're living, where you're working and where you're traveling. Now we are an incredible team from a lot of the real estate industry. We have team members from Zillow, Hostfully, Airbnb. I personally founded the company when I was 12 years old, got a patent for uh, the, the idea when I was 15 and have now raised over uh, $3.5 million. So excited to be here and thanks so much. All right, thanks so much, Madison. We're bringing back our judges. Perfect, should I stop sharing my screen? Yeah, that's great, thank you. Kara, do you want to kick us off? Sure. Um, great presentation. Very interesting. Can you touch on the economics of your partnerships? Um, I'm kind of doing the math in my head. So it's, um, you know, average transaction value of, you know, whatever that is for the electric bike or something, you're getting 20% of that plus, you know, call it about 500 bucks a year. Um, how much of that are you having to share back with your integration partners? So currently we do not share any of the SaaS fee. Actually, in most cases, we don't share any of our revenue. They look at Mount as an amazing add-on because as I stated, there's a hundred property management systems and counting. They are looking for companies like Mount to differentiate their product offering. So originally when I went to those partnerships, I thought we were gonna be not in the driver's seat and have to give up revenue. But as it turns out, Mount is in the power seat and we do not have to work with them to make Mount's company run. So um, Typically, we don't give up any revenue, but if we have to, around 15% of the, the booking revenue, so 20% take. Thanks. Would you like to go next? I just have a quick question, Maddie. It's a great presentation, and, and I agree with you. This is a, a very big opportunity when, when you think about the global footprint of all these micro transactional opportunities that are happening. You know, as you go to Guesty and and hostfully and some of the other big names that I saw on on the integration list, you know, what's been the penetration of those hosts so far, though, right? So big opportunity. It's really easy to go connect 100 versus going in after the 7 million hosts around the world. You still have to sell and convince the host. And so there is a scaling behavior here. So what's your success been so far with getting hosts to convert through one of those integration partners? Yeah, it's a fantastic question. So it's a number we're working towards because those integrations just went live. We revamped the product. And so in the last month, we've just announced those. Um, we're hoping, I mean, industry standard is around you convert 30%, um, but because Mount is so new in this space and we don't have any competitors, 
we're targeting around a 50% conversion in the beginning. Um, but it's not as easy as just you get 100,000 the next day. We have a marketing strategy where we do cross-promotional blogs, webinars, conferences. Um, and because we're aligning ourselves with these big established brands, it helps bring us instant credibility, which is very helpful in the community. Darren, would you like to ask the next question? Yeah. Hey, Maddie, nice presentation. I'm curious about the insurance component that you mentioned and, and the, the magic that goes around that. For, for every one of your transactions, do you is it a blanket policy or are you taking certain levels of risk involved based on location, what the amenities are, et cetera? And does that impact your transaction value? Good question. Um, no, so it's a blanket platform policy. So um, Mount owns it. It's with Lloyd's of London. Uh, and it protects against injury liability when you're renting things like electric bikes and kayaks and stuff. Um, we name all of the hosts as additionally insured. So they get to come onto the policy in a sense. Um, and our that risk is what is covered. So we haven't gotten into the realm of creating our own policy and allowing travelers to purchase it to cover their liability. Um, just the host right now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That wraps our time for questions. Thanks very much. And it also wraps up our, um, our region of the America. So thanks to all of our judges, Stephen Snyder, Carol Whitehill, Stephen Joyce, Adam Harris, and Darren Henley.